This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by NYSE Governance Services, Corporate Board Member, along with Governance Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and Grant Thornton, and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, Chairman of the NYSE Governance Services Corporate Board Member, and it's my pleasure to welcome my co-host again, Scott Cutler, who's the EVP with the NYSE Euronext. And Scott, I'm beginning to feel like uh, you're around all the time now. So you know, I'm a regular? Yeah, almost <laughs> like a regular. I'm not sure if I had wow, to handle this. It's an honor. But, um, well, you know, you and I, as we talk about, um, like to take on some topics and sort of dig down to them. And this one maybe isn't a very emotional topic, but it's an interesting topic. I want to talk about sort of the issue of board planning retreats. And uh, is it sort of a valuable thing or is it a thing of the past? And I say thing of the past, and this is going to show my age a little bit, although this new growth probably right. shows that as well. Um, <laughs> You know, in my day, it was very common to, for a senior management and the board to go off to an off-site location for two days. Um, and really, you would go through presentations about the planning for the company. The board would ask questions. There would be discussions about setting goals. There would be a situational analysis kind of uh, deal with that. So corporate board member was doing an article on that and I was involved in helping with some of the research and I was really surprised how many companies do not do any kind of planning retreat outside of the company facilities anymore. Um, and I sort of wondered about, you know, what may be the reason for that and, and if not, there were even more than I suspected that weren't doing it even inside hmm. the facilities. So I guess my first question to you was, does that surprise you? And and what what's your feelings about, you know, the board's yeah. participation and the concept of a retreat? Well, in, in, in my day, that definition would be qualified as a boondoggle. <laughs> I mean, really, because today that connection to the business and the board is so imperative. Post-financial crisis, new austerity, going to a place where you're gonna golf and come together and roast marshmallows by the fire and develop that type of relationship. It's not a thing of the past, but I think it's much less common you know, today. Not to say it's not important. What, what, what I see happening though is that Board retreats are still happening, and they're happening around the world and sometimes exotic places, but very much tied to where the company has operations. And the, the, the common company today, and this has changed over the last 10 years, is a company with operations and risks around the world. And so I'm hearing more often that boards are doing things in Europe or in Mexico or in Asia or in China or the Middle East. Uh, visiting facilities, holding offsites at those facilities, uh, understanding supply chains, understanding risks, very much tightly connected to the actual business or presence of the business in foreign lands or in you know diverse geographies. Less and less about you know going to play golf you know somewhere, but I think also tied in with that real business purpose. Um, I, I I tend to think that there's still boards most boards try to carve out some social time in around those events to bond as a board and to make sure that the personalities and communication channels you know are there and established and it's hard to quantify and measure that but that's equally important for a well-functioning board to have that you know the level level of I wouldn't call it camaraderie but yeah, communication and transparency with one another yeah, it's interesting. We may have a semantics case here because I didn't say anything about golf. <laughs> I know, but but but, but it's, no, it's interesting. It's, as soon as you interpret retreat or director retreat, the the thought immediately goes to 
okay, I'm going to work in the morning and I'm going to have the afternoon off to yeah. to do things. And uh, I mean, I know that that still happens today with yeah. companies. Um, and I don't think you're wrong on the whole austerity and, and, and yeah. thing. People are much more sensitive. I'll give you a perfect example. And this was maybe, th this in fact was, it goes back to the uh, late 80s, early 90s when we had the first banking crisis. I think one of the large banks in upper New York had laid off about 5,000 people and they took their directors down to some extravagant location in Florida for this yeah. week-long retreat and the Wall Street Journal ran an article about that and the directors spending uh, about how much golf cost, how much the yeah. room cost, how much yeah. you know everything costs. And, and it was such a black eye to that organization. And you can imagine how the employees, those 5,000 employees felt on that. So I understand, I understand all the sensitivity around that part. A lot of times when you do a planning retreat and you're trying to do it in the office you know, or, or in the boardroom, invariably you, it is tough to not be disrupted and, right. and do that. So the concept of getting, and, and particularly you know, one of the things, and, and I'm not sure we've ever talked about this in the show, but identifying the, the next CEO or getting to know the internal people, it is very different when you go off site to have the opportunity no to sit and have those occasions with the CFO or, you know, the, the person that heads your largest division or whatever, because those experiences are going to be the experiences that give you the comfort to say they could they might be our next CEO. Yeah, and, and my only point is that I believe we're in an era and we're going to continue in this era um, where yeah, every expenditure is examined. There is no such thing as just a discretionary spend. Everything has focus. Everything has to uh, relate back to uh, to value. And then I think I think that is a core principle for most organizations today. I think you bring up a very good point about the needs for board boards to communicate well uh, among themselves. And I think that's about establishing relationships. And I think a board, in order for it to be truly effective, both to understand risks is to really understand the operations of the, of the company and understand sort of the deeper layers of management for succession issues and, and, and beyond. And so I think that it becomes part of just a crucial role of the, of, of, of the board. And having, you know, when I think of offsite, I also just think of that as also, you know, if you're going to have management involved, which typically you do, is giving an opportunity for management to be able to step away from the place where, you know, they, they just can't get out of, you know, the, the, the weeds of just what's happening right. in the day-to-day. -day. And I think that's highly valuable to really be able to get true, proper insight from the management team uh, to be able to step away in a place where you can have a, a more open, fulsome dialogue where it's not, you know, responding to your BlackBerry or issues coming up because you're in the home office. Right. Well, let me let me ask you a question. Let me let me take out the word retreat for a yeah. minute and yeah. and talk about board planning. Okay. And I'm I've just anointed you as CEO of your own company. Right. And Thank you. Yeah. No problem. What's my compensation? Um, no. <laughs> we'll talk about that after we hear this answer. Um, so the um, I'm going to ask you as a CEO, right. what should uh, what do you feel should be the director's level of participation in any sort of planning process? Well, if you have a well-structured board, you have a diverse set of perspectives. Uh, expertise and background that hopefully hopefully as a CEO you're able to gain a, a insight beyond your own and be able to get that type of insight that can help you make strategic decisions so to the extent that you have a board that provides that type of value not all boards are structured that way but to the extent you have a board structured that way I, I think involving a board and having board participation in strategic discussion is is highly important uh, because again it's one of those you know perspective uh, perspective issues. But you know, look, you've you've served as a director and senior manager longer than I have. What's what's your perspective? Well, I, I mean, I you know we've 
quote, train directors on this, and we have an opinion that, that, and it's something that stems out of my experience, is that we think, we obviously feel it's very important, and it's, and it's become more important because of risk management, right. okay? There has to be a level of discussion with the board that's gonna help determine the appetite of risk, which will drive strategy, okay? so. Forget all the other strategies. Just that alone is a reason for people to come together, okay? Right. And when I look at that, there's two sort of functions that should happen at the planning meeting. One is the situational analysis that you should go through with the board. Here's the regulatory issues. Here's the um, technology issues. Here is the legal issues. Here is the competitive issues, okay? There should be an annual time that the board is sitting and getting that. Now, understanding all that, here's part two. Here are, here are our goals for them. And the directors, using the wisdom, like you say, that they have from different areas you know, of expertise, should be making comments about uh, whether these goals are realistic, understanding the situational analysis, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Those goals and situation analysis then go to the division heads, department heads. The directors are out of it at that point. They're, they're not to make up the strategies and do that kind of business. They've agreed to the goals. They've agreed to the risk. They've done that. Now, their next thing is back comes the plan and the budget. Right. Okay, And that they have to, you know, they're going to have to buy on to that. But to me, they have those two functions on the front end and then the budget and approving the plan at the back end. That's what I think yeah. the responsibility is. And that's why I like to get, to, regardless of where you go, to get away to somewhere that you can focus on those issues. Right. So, um, any last minute observations? I mean, again, I, yeah. it's interesting, the retreat thing's interesting, but really I should say planning. Well, I, two, two points, one I've already made, one, one is, Again, the, the the focus on the the cost relative to the value in in everything I think is a, a fundamental principle. The second point point, and and I think it is semantics. Uh, re retreat I would actually more equate to location today, and and I actually think uh, that location matters, and that particularly for companies that have diverse locations, operations, distribution. Uh, use the board meeting opportunistically to focus on that location. You can learn a lot by holding a board meeting at a particular location, having a tour, getting to know the people, the facilities, and then spending time doing regular uh, board things. And over the course of a few years as a board member, you're very tightly connected to the business. That's what, if you're, t if you're talking about sort of taking management out and going someplace, focus on locations where you've got business. Well. To me, cost is a non-issue, except it's optics, okay? <clears throat> when you look at what, conceivably, what you could possibly spend on a trip taking your directors to a location. Forget the golf, forget, right. but I mean even a, even a nice location, you know? Um, the cost, you're telling me that if somebody's gonna spend twenty-five. Fifty thousand dollars, but you're going to end up with a good plan, good communication, interact with senior management to the point of that. That people spend that, you know, on taking the plane from, you know, Southern California to New York. So yeah. um, I, I don't think it's a cost. The optics are enormous, though, right. because these are things that normal people don't get an opportunity to do. And you've invested your money as a shareholder, and it supports the image that the directors are not doing their job, they're just in it for the uh, enjoyable opportunities like this. So it's really not a cost issue, it is an optics issue. You know, your point's well taken about take advantage of killing two birds with one stone and go to some place that you have operations because it still lets you get away. Um, but um, it is interesting, we'll have to see how the article ends up and uh, yeah. you know on what the conclusion is relative to that, but I would guess a lot of people are doing it. They're doing it in a very reserved fashion, and they're not going to tell you about it because it's better off left because it's about optics. Yeah, uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> well, look, I think a lot depends on the size of your company as well. Look, I, I, if I'm a small company or I'm a, I'm a venture capitalist, I, I don't want to waste money on this type, this type of stuff. I mean, like, let's let's be real. Let's get down. To, let's get get down to the value. I, I agree with your general point, but yeah. cost cost does matter. <laughs> well, I um, appreciate your input, and yeah. uh, it's always great to deal with another topic. And that will conclude this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. We hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we'll be back again next week uh, dealing with another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. And we'll see you there. Join us again next week for This Week in the Boardroom. Brought to you by NYSE Governance Services Corporate Board Member. Along with Governance Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and Grant Thornton, and contributing partners, National Investor Relations Institute, and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. <laughs>